Welcome to Weekly Wisdom. I'm Rajel, and I am here to share a word with you. Today, uh, we have been in the midst of looking at the subject of covered, covered, and today is part four uh, of this series, Covered. Uh, and today, I want to talk to you from the, the subtitle, Covered Through Chaos. And I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know if you have been feeling like you are experiencing uh, out of control situations surrounding you. Um, but I, I'm led to believe that there are probably some of you who are engaging this, whether live or on the rebroadcast, who have been feeling like the walls are closing in and that chaos is dominating your atmosphere. Uh, I have a word for you today to encourage you uh, as we begin to move forward into the knowledge that you are covered through chaos. And I want to go to a familiar passage of scripture. Uh, several of these have uh, landed uh, unintentionally in the book of Psalms, in uh, the book of the Psalms. And today we're going to go to the 91st number of the book of Psalms. Uh, and I'm going to read and, and, and go through more than I typically do during these segments um, the full chapter is 16 verses, and we won't deal with each one of them uh, very like thoroughly. We'll deal with some of them thoroughly. Some of them we'll just read through, uh, and you can catch the revelation that you need to catch uh, on your own as you go through it and as you revisit it and as you contemplate and chew on uh, what aspects of it you feel are speaking to you, for you, in the situation that you're in, the surroundings that you have, uh, so that you can recognize uh, how to operate more effectively through these situations that feel sometimes chaotic, feel sometimes like they are dominating, feel sometimes like they are intimidating. Um, and I believe that many of us are facing uh, some situations like that. And I want to just deal with some of that today. So Psalm 91, the first verse says, those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of of the Almighty. Those who dwell in the shelter, who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. And I want to just for a moment just talk about this concept of a shadow. This concept of a shadow begins to set the baseline for what we need to get what we can get out of this text today. Uh, we know that a shadow is really a dark area uh, or, or a shape uh, that, that is produced by a body coming between rays of light and some surface. It is a dark area or a dark shape that is produced by a body that comes between some rays of light and a surface, a shadow. Uh, the word shadow, uh, you can't really think of a shadow without beginning to think of the concept of proximity. Uh, in order for my shadow to be on something, I have to be close. You can see a shadow even surrounding my arm a little bit on this backdrop. Uh, I have to be close enough to it in order for a shadow to be cast, right? Uh, a shadow has to be close uh, to the thing that it is reflecting off of that's producing this dark image, this dark shape uh, of a body that comes between a ray of light and a surface. So it's a word that's used in uh, in reference to proximity. Uh, these are the noun versions of the word, but if we think about the verb version of the word shadow, uh, there is an action of to shadow someone or to shadow uh, something. And when we say that in the business world and when we say that uh, in mentoring type situations, uh, we sometimes ask an individual, will you shadow uh, someone as kind of an apprentice so that you can pick up on how they're doing the things that they're doing. It's a, a, a action, a verb form of a succession planning type model in business and the HR functions where we sometimes have someone shadow someone, or maybe you need to shadow someone because you're cross training to be able to learn how to do the things that they do when they are not there. Uh, the, the verb shadow is to follow and to observe someone closely and kind of covertly or, or stealthily or secretly 
um, in a, a inconspicuous. There we go. Inconspicuously. Um, so you don't get in the way of what they're doing. Have you ever been to a restaurant where there was a new waiter or waitress uh, that is beginning to do the job? Uh, what they will typically do is they will have uh, that new trainee begin to shadow a more experienced and a successful, hopefully, in most cases, uh, waiter or waitress who has already been doing the job. And they are there to shadow them, to learn. Uh, they're not really there to take the lead initially, uh, but they are there to, to, to see how they're doing it and to learn uh, on the job and on the fly how to do the things that are needed to be done. Uh, and so this scripture says, those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. All right. So uh, in the noun form, uh, the shadow, here we are, we begin to see, um, like when you're in a position of shadowing, there are two things that you can see at the same time. You can see, oh my goodness, that you are in a dark place, right? So you can see the dark place, uh, but at the same time, you can see the rays of light that are beginning to cause the reflection that produces this shadow. Uh, you are standing in between the dark place and the rays of light. Uh, in order to stay with me so today, we're going to go somewhere. We're going to go quick. So you got to stay with me. Uh, in order to be covered through chaos, you have to follow the light through the darkness. Here come, there comes our verb version of the word shadow. Uh, you have to follow and observe the light closely and inconspicuously. Uh, oh my goodness. I don't know who this is for. We set in some foundation. We going somewhere. Uh, stay with me here. Uh, so those who live in the shelter of the most high will find rest in the shadow of the almighty by reflecting what the Lord does through dark situations by, uh, by, by leaning toward the light, even in the midst of dark situations. This is a word all by itself. We could just do verse one and get a whole lot out of it today. But in order for you to be covered through chaos, you need to position yourself between the chaos and the light. You need to find yourself, oh my goodness, positioned where you can experience, you can see that there's chaos around you, but you are holding on and leaning toward the light of the Almighty. You are shadowing the Almighty because he is leading you, oh my goodness, through the dark place with his rays of light that are shining through in the midst of darkness. Y'all with me? All right, let me know if you're with me. Let me know if you're with me. Um, so that's verse one. Verse two, it carries on and it says, this I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God and I trust him. Oh my goodness. So we dealt with this concept of, of shadow, uh, both in the noun form and the verb form in verse one. Verse two, there's a new concept, a new word that we need to look at very quickly for our baseline. And it is the word refuge. I wish somebody would type, he is my refuge. Oh my goodness. He is my safe place. He is my covering. He is uh, what, what protects me in the midst of the chaotic situations that I have been placed in strategically planted into i am there on purpose i am surrounded by chaos on purpose but he is guiding me through and while i'm in chaos and i don't know who you who it is today i don't know what the chaos looks like that you are experiencing but it feels like things are haywire it feels like things are falling apart and i came here today to let you know that even in the midst of chaos you have a refuge you have a covering that word refuge that word refuge it says this i declare about the lord he alone is my refuge my place of safety he is my god and i trust him refuge refuge it's defined as a condition of being safe or sheltered from pursuit danger or trouble Oh my goodness, it's a condition, I'll say it again, of being safe or sheltered from three realms, from pursuit, from those things that are chasing you, right? From danger, from those things that threaten you, and from trouble, from the chaos that has presented itself as something that will negatively impact your condition, your state of mind. He says, oh my goodness, that he alone is 
my refuge. I wish you would type it. He's my refuge. He's my refuge. He is uh, the condition that allows me to be safe and sheltered from the things that are chasing me. So from pursuit, from danger, which is the threat that is coming against me, and from trouble, which is the negative impact that tries to attach itself to me in the situation that I'm in. Uh, he is my shelter. He is an institution that provides safe accommodations for those who have suffered violence uh, from someone with whom they are in relationship. You know what it is. When someone goes to a shelter, they are finding uh, some escape. They are finding some refuge. They are finding some covering uh, to be able to shield them and protect them uh, from the things that they are facing. Uh, that's verse 2. Verse 3 continues and it says, For he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. So now we have dealt in verse one with the concept of shadow. We have dealt in verse two with the concept of refuge. Verse three, we find another one that we got to deal with very quickly, and that is rescue. Rescue. Uh, if I am to be rescued, the verb rescue means to save someone from a dangerous or a distressing situation. Oh my goodness. Uh, the word rescue as a noun is an act of saving or being saved from danger or distress. The verse says, for he, the almighty, our God, will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. In other words, uh, you are in the midst of some chaotic situations where there are threatening conditions. We talked about them before as we began to deal with refuge. There are things that are pursuing you. There are things that are threatening you. And there are some things that are having negative implications and impact on your life. Uh, these are the pursuit, the danger, and the trouble, the threefold attack that tries to come against you to cause you to become chaotic in chaotic situations. It wants you to reflect the environment but God says you don't have to reflect the external environment because you may be in the midst of it, but you are sheltered from it. Who am I here to help today? You may be in the midst of things that are pursuing you and chasing you. You may be in the midst of things uh, that are presenting threats to you. You may be in the midst, uh, that's danger, you may be in the midst of trouble, which is trying to have negative implications and impact upon the situation that you are in. But just because you are dropped in the center of that doesn't mean that it has access to you. So you don't have to become chaotic because of the chaos that is surrounding you. Instead, you can see that there is another layer of insulation. Oh my God. There's another layer of insulation that is keeping you from being a part of the chaos that is trying to surround you, the chaos of the environment that you are in. There's another layer of insulation that says, what I'm going to surround you with is peace in the midst of the storm. And he says, uh, not only am I your refuge and place of safety, not only will you find rest in my shadow, but verse three, it says, he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. He will rescue you from the chaos. He will protect you from the chaos that is looming and trying to come against you is what verse three tells us. And then I'm just going to read a couple more of these verses. Verse four, it says, he will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. And then look at the last part of verse four. It says, his faithful promises are your armor and protection. Oh my goodness. His, pro his faithful promises are your armor and your protection. Your armor and protection from what? From the chaos that is looming around you. What keeps you safe? What keeps you covered in the midst of chaos that, that is trying to break forth all around you is the fact that you are covered by something. The armor and the protection of the Lord. What is the armor and the protection? It says it is his promises. 
It is his promises that keep you safe in the midst of chaos. It is his promises that allow you and assure that you can keep your mind right when things are trying to take your peace away. It is his promises. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. That's a promise. He said, you are the head and not the tail. That's a promise. He said uh, that I will, I will give you the desires of your heart. That's a promise. He said, oh my goodness, that he'll keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. That is a promise. His promises protect you from becoming a victim of the chaos that is trying to surround you. His promises keep you from losing your mind in the midst of mind-blowing situations. My God. He says his faithful promises are your armor and protection. He says, I'll cover you. I'll shelter you. He already told you that you can dwell in my shadow. He already told you that he would be your refuge. He already told you that he would rescue you. And now in verse four, he says, I'll cover you and I'll shelter you. And what I'm going to cover and shelter you with, what's going to be your armor and protection through what's coming around all around you is my faithful promises, the things that I told you that I would do, that I'm guaranteeing you that I'm going to do in your life. Verse five, uh, I'm just going to read verse five, six, and seven without spending a bunch of time. Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrow that flies in the day. Do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Though a thousand fall at your side, though 10,000 are dying around you, these evils will not touch you. I wish you would type it. These evils aren't going to touch me. These evils, these evils aren't going to touch me. These evils will not touch you. So while you are navigating some chaotic, seemingly out of control scenarios and situations, you are covered through the chaos. How do I know? I told you in week one, David said, the Lord is my shepherd. He's covering me. He's using all the power at his disposal to fend off the attacks of the enemy that are trying to get to me. He's using his vision and his power uh, to shepherd me, to protect me. He has intricate systems of elaborate systems of protection designed around me because I'm valuable to him. Week two, I told you uh, for Job that he was a hedge of protection, that the enemy had to get permission to try to permeate the heads of protection that God had put around Job. And then last week we went back to David and I told you that he hems you in, in front and in back. He's surrounding you to shield you. This week I've told you that you can dwell in his shadow. Mm, my goodness. I've told you that he's your refuge. I've told you that he will rescue you. I've told you that he'll cover you and that he'll be your shelter and that his faithful promises are your armor and your protection and that the evils that you're seeing happening around you, sickness, disease, attacks of the enemy, that these evils will not touch you. Look at what verse 8 says. It begins to blow my mind uh, because it gives a very simple instruction. It says, all right. I know you're in the midst of chaos. I know that these things are coming all against you, but here's what I need you to do. Just open your eyes. Oh my goodness. The word of the Lord says, just open your eyes and see how the wicked are punished. Just open your eyes. There is a reality that is happening around you that God is ready to reveal to you that doesn't line up with the way the situation seems to you. He says, just open open your eyes. I need you to begin to see what's really going on. I need you to begin to see that you are covered while there is a lot of chaos in the, in the land, while there are things happening on the left and on the right, you are hemmed in, in front and in back. You are sheltered. You are protected. You are covered. You are covered. I know you hear frightening sounds. I know that it sounds scary, but you are covered. You are safe. Verse nine says, if you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the most high your shelter, these are the ifs, these are the conditional clauses of the, of the contractual agreement that he's preparing for us. If you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the most high your shelter, no evil will conquer you. It doesn't mean that it's not going to try to come against you, but no evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your home. If you stay positioned appropriately, you will be covered through 
the chaos. Uh, it reminds me of the scripture, no weapon formed against you. It's formed. It's pointed at you. No weapon formed against you, though, is going to be able to prosper. It's not, go oh my goodness, it's not going to be able to be fruitful and productive in stopping you. It can't stop you. It won't stop. Can't stop. You, you are going to keep on being who you're called to be. You're going to keep on doing what you are called to do. If you operate within this covering, if you stay positioned upon appropriately you are covered verse 11 for he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go wherever you go they will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone king james says you won't dash your foot on a stone uh they will they will oh my goodness the heavenly power uh, the, he has given a heavenly assignment of protection and covering to protect you wherever you are. If you're in a hostile work environment, he will still be your shelter and protection. If you are in a challenging relationship, he will be your shelter and protection. Oh my goodness. If you stay positioned, he will shepherd you. He will cover you through the chaos. He has assigned, oh my goodness, the angels, the, the forces of heaven uh, to protect and to cover you. He is a shepherd. The power of heaven uh, that he has is at your disposal to protect you through the chaos. I hope that's encouraging somebody today. Verse 13 begins to talk about what you can do, the ability that you will have even in the midst of these chaotic situations that, that are surrounding you. It says you will trample upon lions and cobras. You will trample upon lions and cobras. You will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. Uh, in other words, if you operate under this covering, if you operate within this covering, you will have the ability to be safe, even in dangerous, volatile situations. You will have a safety and a peace, even in toxic situations and circumstances. You will be able to operate under the radar and over the attacks of the enemy. My goodness, you will make progress through chaos. I wish you type it. I'm making progress through chaos. I'm making progress through chaos. Verse 14, the Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When you call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. Verse 16, the last verse, I will reward them with a long life and give them my salvation. Today, I want to encourage you to trust your covering. Trust your covering. There are benefits to being covered and you are covered through chaos. I hope you can get something out of that. I hope you receive that today. Thank you so much for joining. I'll talk to you all soon. Have a phenomenal week. Love you.